This is the best way to play Zarya in Overwatch 2. Your bubbles are by far the most important part of your kit and don't use them just for charge. A good guideline for bubble usage is to bubble aggression, meaning bubbling your own aggression, the aggression of a teammate, or if you or a teammate are being aggressed on. Try and keep a bubble in the mid fight to sustain yourself and so you don't get run over. Keep in mind, the threat of bubble is what allows you to take space. If the enemy team know you haven't got any bubbles, they're gonna run you over. Zarya's weapon, the Brokey Beam, Make Zarya fire a beam that deals either 85 DPS or 170 depending on its charge. She can also lob explosive charges dealing 47 to 95 damage respectively and they take up 25 ammo per shot. The most important mistake that Zarya players, including you watching this video, probably make is just turning your brain off and to default shoot at the enemy tank, especially enemy Orisas. Here's professional coach Temporal explaining why shooting smaller hitboxes is so vital and why only the top 1% of Zarya players actually do this. So I want to point this out because this is really important and I'm seeing a lot of people sort of fall into this trap of going tank shoot at other tank. Remember, the tanks give you 30% less ult charge, the tanks are never going to die in some of these situations if they have two supports available to them. You probably don't have the best tracking in the world of one that Zarya has actually wasted or used both of their bubbles, you're going to be better off shooting at any other target that becomes available. Even if the Zarya is at like 50% health, you're generally going to be better swapping off to the Moira that came in to heal them, swapping into the Lucio that came in to bug you to help their Zarya stabilize, or their Orisa stabilize, or their Roadhog stabilize, or their Reinhardt stabilize. You are looking as Zarya to swap past the tank to do damage. Not to mention, with Orisa, not only are you getting 30% less ult charge, but she also has armor, meaning you're dealing 30% less damage, and she has fortify, reducing that by another 40%. Hopefully, I've convinced you to not shoot Orisa all the time. In the bubble section, I'll have Temporal explain how you can just walk past the enemy tank, especially if they don't have CC, to then shoot at squishy heroes if you have a bubble available. Now onto the most common mistake Zarya's make with their gun, which is, well simple, is to stop reloading so much. So many Zarya's, including myself, will fire one right click charge and then immediately reload. This kneecaps the damage you can do over time, so please try and actually use the full 100 ammo in your clip and ensure you have a full clip when the fight actually begins. The, the, the quintessential Zarya error is to reload whenever you didn't need to. And like right now, 40 charge, 50, why the heck are you reloading? The fight is starting now. It's not like, oh, oh, the fight's about to start. No, why, why, are, you, why are you reloading? Why are you reloading again? <laughs> like, there's stuff going on! As Zarya, you also want to be interweaving your beam with your right clicks. This helps to maximize the ammo capacity that you actually have. The next thing to note is to maximize your 1v1 dueling potential. For the overwhelming majority of cases, you want to start and end with a right click and then use your beam in between that period of time. Here's the use of explaining the reasons for this here. The right click slightly boops your enemy, making their strafe easier to predict and their first shot slightly harder to hit. If you really catch an enemy off guard, you can throw in a melee right after the initial right click for maximum DPS. The next thing to learn is rocket jumping. This is done by simply aiming down at your feet, jumping, and as soon as you are midair, you shoot a charge at the ground directly below you. This is only done for mobility, either to get you back to the fight slightly quicker or to reach certain high grounds, as Zetil does here. Oh my god, sorry, what the f my high ground. You can also do double rocket jumps by firing a load in the air, that, that, that sounds crazy I know, and then combining that with a right click on the ground to gain double the heights. After a one team fight, you can and should also push up and toss a few right clicks close to the enemy spawn for two main reasons, to farm grav and to retain your energy by absorbing spam early on. Zarya's first, second and only ability, the bubble, Make Zarya emit a personal or projected barrier that shields Zarya and her teammates against incoming attacks, redirecting that energy to increase her weapon's damage. The barriers are 200 HP, last 2 seconds, and are on an 11 second cooldown. Zarya gains 1% per 5 damage blocked, meaning a total of 40 energy gained per bubble. 
I've coupled together both her personal and projected bubble since it's slightly easier to edit for me, and the principles around bubble usage still stay the same. The most important and universal principle with your bubbles is the bubble aggression. Think about it. 90% of the time you whiff a bubble and get zero charge is because you either weren't aggressing or the enemy team weren't aggressing on you, or your teammate depending on what bubble you use. So simply put, if you want to get energy on Zarya quickly, just bubble aggression. Now let's build off this further. Bubbling aggression isn't enough in Overwatch 2, and it's not good enough to just use two bubbles back to back to get 80 charge. The reason for this is because you can easily get run over because you have no defensive cooldown left. You're a sub 500 tank with no armor and a decently sized hitbox. Imagine if you also use both your bubbles, you're gonna get run over. Her bubbles become less about building charge and more about controlling space. Have you thinking to yourself, but well, if I bubble for charge, I'll get more damage. Well, the issue with that is if you bubble for charge and you cannot push out and take space anymore, you lose neutral and you have to retake for your team, well, then your team can't play the game. You lose out on damage. You can't play the game. And when you're dead, you have zero charge. So to redeem this, the play is to either gain 80 charge by eating a ton of spam from a distance so that by the time the enemy team push into you or vice versa, you already have a bubble back up, or simply, you just keep one of your bubbles as a failsafe when you're on decent charge, as Balu explains here. Like, let's say I'm like 75, 80 charge, and let's say this is the enemy team. If I have personal bubble, that might mean I can go from this position over here to this position here. More aggressive, still cover, but like, let's say I do this. I'm on this angle and I just like walk in front and take damage to get from 75 to like 90 charge. This is the bad news. I got 15 charge, but because I no longer have personal level, it might not be safe for me to go right back to where I was. The enemy team might go, hey, that girl doesn't have personal level. And they might start to push me, in which case I have to back all the way back to this position over here. So the irony is that I have higher charge, but I'm doing less damage because I'm in a more conservative, less aggressive position. The point being is that once you're already at a fairly decent charge, don't go looking for personal bubble charge. Play aggressive positions and sit on your personal bubble as a failsafe. So in short, being on decent charge but having a spare bubble allows you to play more aggressively because of the threats or safety of your bubble. In Overwatch 2, with one less source of damage, you can actually utilize this by walking past the enemy tank to damage the enemy healers. You're happy to ignore that, Zarya, and sort of dosy do yourself to here where you can melt the Moira. You do not care that the Zarya is shooting you. In fact, if you're still at like 100%, 80%, 70% health, you don't even care and you're just going to walk in and shoot at that Moira. You're not do -si doing in with your bubble to kill the Moira initially, you're do -si doing in with your bubble available, and then you're using it to take out the Moira, the Lucio, the Sojourn, the Pharah, whatever is there. Now, obviously this isn't a good idea against all tanks. If the enemy tank has higher sustain, like an Orisa or a Reinhardt, and if they have CC, like Hog or Orisa, then I'd be cautious about this kind of a Aggression. But St. Paul is right in the general sense of being allowed to take more aggressive positions in the mid fights if you have a spare bubble. The only type of bubble I haven't really thoroughly covered are peeling bubbles. This is just when you bubble a squishy hero when they're being dove in order to protect them. This is fine to do, especially if they're running at least two dive heroes, but don't save your bubbles waiting for something specific to happen. Similarly, you can and should also bubble a teammate if they're being aggressed on. For example, if your soldier is on an angle and gets stuck by a Cassidy grenade, you better get that bubble. So hopefully that covers most of the use cases of your bubble. In short, bubble aggressively to either gain charge or to threaten a more aggressive position for yourself or for your teammates if you're bubbling them. Bubble your teammates if they're being aggressed on in a duel or if they need peeling. This will all depend on the enemy composition and I will get onto comps later in the video. Other things to note about your bubble is that you can clean status effects and counter ultimates such as EMP or shatter with it. Zarya's ultimate, the black hole, makes Zarya launch a gravity bomb drawing in enemies into the center from a 6 meter radius dealing 5 DPS and lasting 3.5 seconds. Firstly, a simple tip, but please reload before you use grav. The last thing you want is to go through a 1.5 second reload animation during a grav that doesn't even last 4 seconds. You're basically wasting half your ultimate at that point. In terms of usage, an underrated one is solo graving. Especially considering how oppressive things like Nanoblade is, one of the best and most reliable counters is to use grav after their Genji uses his first dash during his blade. 
It might even be worth solo grabbing a tank if you can guarantee their death, same with any backline squishy heroes. This is kinda how you'll be using grab anyways, looking to go deep and aggressive into backline territory, drawing a lot of attention to yourself which should allow your DPS to do the heavy lifting. There's also the timing of your grab. Try and do this in the mid fight if possible. Not only will you be on high charge, but this is also because there'll be less cooldowns to prevent or stop the follow up of your grav, like an enemy Zarya bubble, a Kiriko Suzu, an Ananaze, etc. Not to mention, Diva's Matrix or Arisa's Spear Spin will likely be on cooldown, decreasing the odds of your grav getting eaten. Speaking of getting eaten, just grab corners or payloads against Diva. Lastly, I'll talk about your grav follow up. If there's multiple enemies in the grav, the classic right click and melee combo is best to do when trying to do as much damage to as many enemies as possible. However, if there's a lot of healing, just straight up beaming the targets and then finishing them off with a right click melee might be best. Now onto Zarya's positioning, playstyle and communication. Starting off with communication, it can often be a good call out to just say bubble in 3 or bubble in 5 if you're playing Reaper Zarya or playing with a teammate expecting bubbles. This just lets them know roughly when to engage, meaning you synchronise your aggression together. Speaking of the Zarya Reaper composition, here's a voice cat outlining how the composition fundamentally works. Zarya can use bubbles on DPS like Reaper and Tracer in order to zone enemies or make a distraction that the core can use to push up into a stronger position or to clear split targets, kinda similar to how the Monkey Zarya comp is played in 6v6. This example here is pretty clinical. Reaper goes in with Bubble to draw attention and split backline LOS from the monkeys attempted to trade. This forces Bubble and jump back, at which point the Zarya team can easily push in to exploit the enemy downtime. To add on to this, this isn't just with Reaper, it's with any hero that has burst mobility. It could be a Reaper TP, a Genji Dash, a Tracer Blink, a Symmetra TP, a Junkrat Mine, a Far Concuss, or anything else that can quickly help draw attention away from the frontline and do those trades and splits which your Cat was talking about. Now what if you're not playing Zarya Reaper, or if you're not playing Zarya like this at all? Well, you basically just bubble for yourself selfishly for the most part, unless you obviously see an opportunity for an aggressive teammate to get a bubble. Now with positioning, there's four general rules. Here's an example on Havana Second to help illustrate them. Firstly, you need cover. This is actually really important on Zarya since you need some place to regain your cooldowns. Secondly, you need LOS or line of sight so you can actually see and shoot the enemy team. Thirdly, and this is less important since you're a tank, but you need good distance from angles so you don't get snuck up on by a Sombra or a Tracer from a short flank. And lastly, you need good defensive and aggressive rotation options. This basically means you need to be able to escape or push up more aggressively, and this relates back to the thing about bubble management and having bubble as a failsafe when you're on decent charge. Lastly, moving on to tank matchups. Zarya vs Diva, a neutral matchup. In short, Zarya wins on the front line but loses on the angles. Obviously, Diva can't mitigate your damage and she hasn't got range, meaning if you keep your distance, she's forced to move. However, because Diva has more mobility, it can be tough dealing with her angled pressure, especially if she starts flying around you. In this case, look to bubble the people that Diva dives or duels and look to trade out backlines. Zarya vs Arisa, a favourable matchup for Arisa. Again, Orisa can't really do anything about your damage, but the mistake here is just tunneling onto the Orisa and not onto the Sojourn who's pocketed with Overclock about to kill half your team. Of course, shoot the Orisa if there's no other target available, but don't ignore the squishies. Zarya vs Ryan As Flat says, Zarya is the off-tank Reinhardt. Zarya trades out some sustain in exchange for higher damage compared to Reinhardt. Don't get too close, even with bubbles as you can get run over, but aside from that, Look to beam down the squishies around Reinhardt, keep your distance, even play high ground if need be, and you should be alright. Zarya vs Hog, a slightly favourable matchup for Zarya. Obviously bubble hooks, but similar to Arisa, whilst I know Hog is a big fat duty target, don't just tunnel your beam on him unless there's nobody else to shoot. He won't die, he'll waste your time, so again, look for angles and rotations onto the squishies where possible. Zarya vs Drunker Queen. Junker Queen's slender hitbox isn't the easiest thing to track for lower players or people who play no aim heroes like me. Coupled with Queen's self sustain thanks to her bleeds, as well as her commanding shout, a good Queen can chunk you down up close due to your low sustain as a poke ball tank. However, your bubbles counter her ultimate, and if the Queen doesn't take action with her commanding shout, she's easy pickings. Zarya vs Doomfist, a favourable matchup for Zarya. 
Since Doomfist trades out cleave damage in exchange for burst damage when compared to his dive counterpart Winston, your bubbles can do a whole lot more for saving singular targets that Doom may dive on. Just be careful not to supercharge his punch early on. Zaya vs Ball, a neutral matchup. Most of the time, you won't even be seeing the enemy ball, and since a good ball never plays frontline, you can't really farm charge off him. If his pile drives are excessive pressure for teammates, consider using your bubbles on them, and in the meantime, look to draw attention of the enemy DPS, especially ones like Soldier and Sojourn, looking to force duels, and you'll gain energy that way. Zarya vs Winston, a favourable matchup for Winston. Just like D.Va, Winston has more mobility, meaning he can get on top of your squishies and in places where you can't reach. His low damage also means you can't reliably farm energy off him, and his clear damage means that you can somewhat easily waste your bubbles. As a result, look to absorb his dive pressure and push it in hard after he uses his bubbles. A Winston after he dives is pathetic. He'll have no jump, no bubble, and will likely be on low HP. This is your time to strike. Zarya vs Sigma, a map dependent matchup. Sigma will obviously look to keep as much distance away from you as possible, whereas if you're on top of him, that doesn't really matter. You can bubble through his accretion and he easily loses up close. Well that's it for the video. If this was the best Zarya guide on YouTube, be sure to like the video to give it a boost in the algorithm, and if this video helped to raise your Zarya IQ, be sure to share it with your friends to also raise theirs. Until next time.